Hello ladies and gents, I'm the Beanie 101 and you're watching a video on XCOM 2 and today I'm going to be talking about the specialist class and how to build your specialist class out as you progress through the game. So I'm going to be highlighting what I feel are the absolute best skills to be taking with your specialist also skills that are useful in specific situations and as well as skills I'm going to be talking through uh, your weapon upgrades and equipment that you should take with your specialists that really synergize well with the skills and make sure that you are making the most out of the specialist class. What I will sell about, say about the specialist class is that they do tend to be a jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, they are very much a support class in XCOM 2 so uh, they put out a good consistent damage throughout the game without necessarily ever being the class that truly shines in a particular playthrough. There are some very unique situations where they can shine though. Their ability to hack um, and do things remotely uh, from large long distances away means that they are super useful on hacking missions uh, and they are also uh, very useful uh, as a support troop on Overwatch as well. So if you make liberal use of Overwatch then the specialist class is someone that you really want to uh, look into. The very first skill that we have on our specialist is Aid Protocol. This allows the Gremlin to uh, provide mobile cover to anybody on the battlefield. So you can provide that cover to yourself or you could provide it to say a ranger that is out in the battlefield and might be a little more exposed. It grants I think it's plus 20 defense uh, so it's the equivalent of uh, high cover. Uh, and uh, that will last for one turn. So if you have somebody that is at risk of being flanked or just uh, somebody that you want to protect a little more, then Aid Protocol is certainly a skill that you can use. Uh, it is the first skill that you get at the squaddy rank of specialist, so every single specialist is going to get Aid Protocol. At the corporal rank, you have the choice between medical protocol and combat protocol. I have a tendency of leaning towards medical protocol for my very first specialist on a particular playthrough, just so that I know that I definitely have somebody that can heal or stabilize my troops remotely. Uh, a med kit is a very, very useful uh, skill uh, and very useful piece of equipment to be using uh, if you are taking shots. But uh, being able to then heal remotely makes that skill even, even better. So medical protocol means that your gremlin can fly out and it can heal people from a long distance away rather than you having to run up and use your medkit from close proximity. You do also get an extra charge of your medkit. So one medkit with medical protocol has two separate uses. Combat protocol is a skill that is consistently good throughout the game. At the beginning of the game combat protocol is excellent because it is one of very few skills that offers guaranteed damage. You've got combat protocol, you've got uh, maybe a ranger's sword attack and you have grenades and explosives as your main damage, guaranteed damage dealers early in the game. So if you have enemies that you absolutely have to take out, if you have someone low health that you want to finish off, Combat Protocol is just quite frankly going to get the job done for you. And it's not going to expose your trooper much like sword attacks can do, so Combat Protocol is a much safer skill to be using. It also, when by the time you get to mid-game, can be upgraded by upgrading your gremlin. So you're consistently doing more and more damage as you progress through the game. On top of that, by the time you hit mid to late game, when you're getting far more robotic enemies uh, and mechanized enemies, combat protocol is fantastic. It does double damage to robotic enemies and completely bypasses all of their armor. So there's no need to use grenades or shredder abilities to strip down a heavy mechs or a sector pod's armor. You can just use specialists to fly in with combat protocol and do consistent guaranteed heavy damage to robotic enemies and it's really really good. So I am a big fan of combat protocol. 
At sergeant level, you have the choice between revival protocol and haywire protocol. Uh, revival protocol is going to get rid of any debilitating uh, negative status that hits your troops. So uh, disorientation, uh, if they're stunned by a stun lancer, if they're panicked, if they're knocked unconscious, revival protocol is going to get these guys back in the game. It's a useful skill to have. Um, especially because things like being stunned or being knocked unconscious or being panicked uh, takes one squad member completely out of your control. Uh, and so early game, when you only have four guys on your squad, having someone that's panicked or stunned uh, really, really sets you back quite a lot. Uh, so you want to get these guys back up and running as soon as you possibly can. Revival Protocol is again a skill that's probably useful uh, early to mid game. I find that later on throughout a campaign, Revival Protocol has less uses because generally speaking, I'm tackling enemies and doing enough damage and killing enemies quick enough not to be able to be stunned or panicked or knocked unconscious by, uh, by anything. Uh, but uh, depending upon your playstyle, if you're new to the game, uh, if you're uh, struggling on any of the higher difficulties, then Revival Protocol is a defensive skill that can certainly help you out. I do prefer Haywire Protocol at Sergeant rank because this gives you the ability, uh, again, to tackle robotic enemies in a slightly different way. This way, with, uh, with Haywire Protocol, it allows you to stun uh, a robotic enemy. Uh, with a uh, hacking attempt chance and you have a lower chance to actually uh, take control of that enemy as well which is pretty huge you can increase your chance again by upgrading your gremlin um, and also by using skulljacks with skull mining which is a proving ground project uh, so you can get your hacking skill quite high up uh, which means that your chance of succeeding with the stun and the seize control can be pretty good um, but uh, haywire protocol the ability to stun a, a, a mechanized a robotic enemy is a pretty big deal because usually the robotic enemies on on any particular battlefield are going to be one of your biggest threats they're going to be one of the enemies that is going to put up uh, the most damage so you want to usually tackle those robotic enemies first before you tackle anything else so haywire protocol great skill at Lieutenant's rank, you have the option of Field Medic or Scanning Protocol. Both of these are much of a much for this. They are very much supplementary skills. Neither of these are going to make or break a playthrough. I would say if you've taken Medical Protocol higher up in the Specialist tree, then Field Medic makes absolute sense. It gives you an extra two charges. So uh, with Medical Protocol, you're going to have four charges with one med kit, and without medical protocol, you're going to have three. But if you're taking field medic, I do ask you why you're not taking medical protocol as well. You want that ability to be able to heal remotely. And if you can do it multiple times throughout a particular mission, then it just makes medical protocol even better. Scanning protocol is... Uh, really a super upgraded version of a battle scanner uh, so you know what a battle scanner does you chuck it out onto the battlefield and it's going to reveal uh, any enemies that are currently covered by the fog of war and are currently out outside of your range of sight um, and it's also going to uncover any faceless uh, enemies that are hiding amongst civilians on retaliation missions or if you have any dark events which place faceless enemies within your missions then scanning protocol is good. The range on this ability is absolutely huge. You chuck this out there you are going to uncover a number of enemies and it's going to help you tactically. So I would say that scanning protocol is more of a proactive ability so you have a choice of when you're going to use it whereas something like field medic it's a reactive ability it is a defensive ability that you're going to use as a reaction to uh, being shot at and, and having your troops injured so if you want to be more proactive take scanning protocol at captain level we have two choices we have covering fire and we have threat assessment 
Uh, I usually take threat assessment. Uh, threat assessment just upgrades your aid protocol skill and not only provides you with that mobile cover from aid protocol, but it also gives you a covering fire overwatch shot guaranteed. So if you have a ranger who has been scouting up ahead and is in a little bit of danger, you can pop aid protocol and you're going to give him a guaranteed covering fire overwatch shot. So he's going to have the ability to shoot at whatever is going to be shooting at him first and has a good ability, a good uh, chance to take them out. Covering fire is uh, exactly what you get from threat assessment other than the fact that covering fire is a passive ability. If you happen to be overwatching you will have the ability to trigger that overwatch shot on an enemy action rather than just movement. And this is useful because quite often uh, certain enemies like sectoids or ca uh, advent captains, if they know that they are being overwatched on, they are not going to move. Um, and they quite often uh, are just going to either shoot at you or use some sort of uh, marking ability or mind control ability, but they're definitely not going to move. Some other enemies don't don't really don't care. So things like Archons and things like uh, Mutons and Berserkers, they tend to have a bit more health and a bit more armor, so they usually don't mind tanking an Overwatch shot and moving anyway. Um, but covering fire does mean that you can take care of enemies uh, that are trying to act upon you. The reason why I don't like covering fire quite so much is because if you're firing on an enemy that's taking an action rather than moving, then generally they're going to be on cover. So you're going to be suffering a fair amount of an aim penalty with a covering fire overwatch shot. So I find that they tend not to hit that regularly. Threat assessment is a bit of a different kettle of fish with the covering fire overwatch shot because in the situation that I described earlier where a ranger is in a particular dangerous situation and you want to protect them with aid protocol, usually enemies are going to move to try and flank them. And so the flank, if, if, if they are flanked then so are you. Um, so you're you're going to tend to take a shot that is more likely to be a shot out in the open rather than uh, a shot at somebody who is in cover. At major rank you've got ever vigilant or guardian. Ever vigilant means that if you spend all of your actions moving you are guaranteed an overwatch shot. Free overwatches. Um, what's not to like? It's it's all right. Uh, this is particularly useful if you have a specialist that you like to take out on timed missions, particularly missions where you have to rescue a VIP um, or uh, destroy a particular um, uh, beacon. Ever vigilant means that you can dash and you can move more quickly to a particular objective and you know that you have that guaranteed overwatch shot. However, I do really like the Guardian ability at Major Rank. Every successful Overwatch shot that you take, you have a 50% chance to take another Overwatch shot. So this triggers actually pretty regularly. Bearing in mind that if you're taking an overwatch shot, you're usually shooting at an enemy that is moving, so they are going to be out of cover, so it's going to be relatively high aim. And if you couple that with the uh, Guerrilla Tactics School ability that you can purchase for the specialist, which is cool under pressure, that gives you an additional 10 aim and, most importantly, the ability to critically hit on overwatch shots with which nobody else has the ability to do so if you are taking cool under pressure in the guerrilla tactics school i would definitely take guardian because this makes your specialist an absolute overwatch machine they will take multiple overwatch shots they will critically hit and the criticals happen more regularly than you think because again you are shooting at enemies that are completely out of cover so they have a pretty high chance to crit so you are doing loads of damage with guardian i think it is a great skill if you take cool under pressure and also if you stack things like scopes um, and tracer ammo onto your specialist you're going to have very high aim uh, if you stick an aim pcs chip in there as well you're going to become an absolute overwatch monster 
At Colonel rank, uh, both of these skills are pretty good. Restoration is kind of like a panic oh shit button uh, that you can use once per mission and it basically means that your gremlin flies around and it heals or revives everybody in your squad. So if you've been taking uh, consistent damage and you've got loads of guys that are spread across the battlefield and they've all taken injuries, then this restoration ability just heals every single one of them. Really, really good skill, really good defensive skill. Synergizes well with field medic and medical protocols. So if you are going down the battle medic tree, then yeah, sure. Restoration is a skill that you absolutely want to take. Capacitor Discharge is a huge like EMP blast. It's an electrical discharge uh, from your gremlin that essentially damages and potentially stuns all nearby enemies. The range of this ability is pretty big and yet again robotic enemies take double damage for this skill. So again Capacitor Discharge is something that is very very good mid to late game. Uh, it's got a much greater range than say uh, a grenade so if you have enemies that are relatively closely bunched together but you can't quite hit multiple enemies with uh, with a grenade then capacitor discharge again it's it's a it's an ability that is guaranteed damage so you, there is your specialist uh, tree lots of guaranteed damage in here lots of uh, skills that will scale up quite nicely throughout your playthrough specifically on the combat hacker side of the tree to keep your specialist useful throughout your playthrough uh, next up uh, we want to take a look at the loadout uh, the gremlin is going to give you some hacking bonuses if you have obviously gone down the medic tree, stick a medkit on your specialist. Otherwise, I would probably go with something like tracer ammo to give them some additional aim. And always, always, always have your skulljack on your specialist. It gives them a hacking boost, which means that they can shut down and take over robotic enemies much, much easier. So Skulljacks all the way. With regards to weapon upgrades, I don't think I particularly have uh, uh, an optimized weapon upgrade on my particular specialist here. I've got a repeater, so a 15% chance to instantly kill. That's not bad, especially if you're taking lots of overwatch shots. Um, I would almost always uh, ask you to put on an expanded magazine if you go down the uh, overwatch version of your specialist and you're taking lots of shots. If guardian triggers several times, you're going to be running out of ammo pretty fast. So you're going to want to increase your clip size by uh, one, two or three uh, as you see fit. But a repeater is not a bad option. I would also consider using scopes uh, as well. The 15% chance to instantly kill uh, is really, really useful. So there you have it. That is my uh, option for building out your uh, specialist in terms of what sort of things you want to consider for skills, for equipment, and for upgrades. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you build your specialists up any differently? Uh, I would be keen to know uh, what, if I've missed anything out or if you have any other hints and tips on how to build out your specialist. If you like the video and have found it useful, please hit that like button uh, and share it with your friends. Um, and likewise, I, like I mentioned earlier, I do have an XCOM 2 playthrough uh, on my channel. So if you fancy watching me play XCOM 2, you do have the option to check that out in the description and on screen right now. I've been the Beanie 101. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful and I will catch you again next time round.